Hi again, and welcome back to Top Floor Studios in Gothenburg, Sweden, where today we will do some drum recording. And wow. Oh, hold on. Ha! Sorry about that. Uh, this is Jonas from the band Evergrey, and he will be uh, our drummer today as we do some metal drumming for uh, a song you have written, right? Yeah, not so much metal drumming, but it's... Uh, it's drumming. Somewhat drumming, yeah. You Guten Tag! <laughs> Big hits! You could, you could call it drumming. Yeah. Some sort of drumming. Yeah, yeah. some people call it drumming. That's good enough yeah. for me. So, you, 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 you wrote another song first, but it was too good. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, we figured we, we, I wrote one song and uh, it turned out pretty good. So we figured we'd, uh, we would release it later on. But uh, we might have some issues with the, the rights and stuff for like on YouTube. And uh, so uh, it's, I played it safe and wrote, wrote another yeah. piece of music. So you so. wrote this song in basically what, one day? Well, no. If you put it together, I I started on uh, in panic on Tuesday, and, uh, and I and rec recorded everything, the guitars and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the lead guitar is played by my uh, younger brother uh, and me, but he's doing like ninety percent, and uh, the rest is me. Yeah. That's crazy. We'll see. It's going to be interesting to hear. I haven't heard and, any of this. So. And uh, I haven't. This is the first time when we just set up the drums. It's, it's the first time I played. This song on drum on the drums, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. How long how long has it been since you played before this? Before this, I actually played. Uh, let's see, I think last uh, last weekend, but that was like the first real time in ten months that I sat behind a drum since kit. Since you were here recording the last Evergrey album. That's right. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But uh, how do you feel in your? Uh, how does it feel to play? Ah, uh, it's. It's your thing, though. It, you, it, it's just, it sounds just as shitty as it you know, always, <laughs> always does. Always. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as always. So it's no, yeah. It's cool. All right. Uh, also, uh, yesterday you had some really good questions. Uh, just keep those questions coming. And um, if you have questions about what we're doing, ask them. If you have questions about what we're going to do in the mix, save those questions for the mix uh, workshop. And if you have other questions, you can ask them, but try to ask them like in a in a good when we have a little break or maybe save them towards the end of the day if you want to know the size of Jonas shoes or ego whatever. yeah favorite color the size of your ego mm. <laughs> all right so we have a drum kit set up in there um, and it's uh, the same kit as I used yesterday the DS drums kit and um, we have just set up the mics. We haven't done any gain staging or like we've done some rough placements. That's basically it. So uh, let's go in and take a look at the miking and also get a feel for the tuning, I think. You want to hang around in here? Sure. Cool. Gladly. Gladly. Over there, okay, I'm good to go. Okay. So you can see me there, and you can see me there. Oh, I need my iPad, if there's any questions, hold on. Boopity boop. Or you want to have it in here so you can watch? <laughs> Actually, yeah. You keep it. I'll do the questions later. It's way better. So, this is Jonas' setup for today. Um, 
and uh, I think I changed the snare for the, it was the same as yesterday, we used the copper snare, uh, the free floater, pearl, uh, but we changed today for a maple free floater instead, it's a little warmer and a little thicker, I would say, in the sound. Um, Oh, and also I changed the floor toms because I remember that Jonas prefers um, instead of 12, no, sorry, instead of 10, 12, 14, 16, he usually plays 10, 12, 16, 18. So that's what we're doing now. The kick is uh, the same as yesterday, 22 by 17. And a bunch of Sabian cymbals. Most of them are ones that Jonas brought and some are from here. It's a mishmash of different ones. Um, let's start with, take a look at the tuning, I think. Just to make sure it's where it should be. And I don't have any sound yet, so you're not gonna be able to hear it through the mics. Okay, I need to look at this. Also, I'm choosing a bit higher tuning than I did yesterday because I realized that I want more of that attack in the toms or at least the, the rack toms. Yeah, should be fine. Should be fine. Um, so let's take a look at some of these mics. Let's start from bottom up. Let's start with how are they, uh, how they're going into the console in order. Um, I'm gonna show you a mic because I can't really take it out of the drum now that I placed it inside there. But right here is a um, Shure. Uh, Beta 91, it's a PZM mic, and it's, um, it wasn't designed for drums, but it's become a very, very common drum mic. And uh, you place it inside, lying down like this, inside the drum. And the, the main reason to have this mic is to give you that, like, treble, high-end, snappy attack. Uh, so it's it's very close to the beater head. And then here, we have a second mic. Let's bring that out. Oop, I don't want to mess this up too much. So right here is a MyLab BDM01 uh, kick mic. And this is a, um, you would think it's a dynamic mic, but it's actually a condenser mic, so it runs on phantom power. And this is by far my most used uh, bass drum mic. It used to be uh, the classic, uh, you know, AKG or Shure mics, but since I switched to this a couple of years back, I have not looked back. Um, and the third mic is this one. It's a Yamaha Subkick, and this is a reversed like it's it's a it's a speaker uh, element like in here it's a, it's a speaker that's reversed and used as a microphone and um it it's it's recent like it someone realized long ago that if they did like that they they turned a speaker into a mic that could withstand uh low end frequencies with attack with high volume pressure uh, a lot better than uh most other mics. So this is just for the sub frequencies. And these three mics, I will show you in, in the mixing workshop, these three mics are working together in different ways. You can mess with them in different ways when it comes to phase and EQ uh, to get that control. Instead of having one mic where you have all the frequencies, you have three mics with different, uh, well, they have different jobs basically uh, and for different frequencies. 
and that means that maybe I want that snappy mic inside uh, the Beta 91. Maybe I want that super short, but I want this one super long. And then it's pretty good to have three mics to be able to do that. Um, moving on. We're taking a look over here on the snare mics. Let's see if you can see them. The top mic, yesterday I used a, um, a Shure SM57, but today I switched to a Beta 57. It's kind of the same characteristics, but this is um, a super cardioid. So it's, it's got a more narrow, um, you know, what it hears. It, it rejects the side a bit more, uh, which gives it like less bleed and a li little bit more focus uh, and it's good to have on the snare drum for that reason because it's there's so much going on like you have a hi-hat on the side you have a tom on the side and so it's better to have a mic that only focuses on the snare sound uh, under the snare is just a regular um, SM57 and um, yeah, on the toms here, I'm using a very small capsule um, condenser mics. These are the MyLab VM44 mics. And um, again, this is what I usually use on toms when I'm not using a dynamic mic. The good thing about using a condenser mic on toms is that the, there's a little bit more bleed, but the bleed is much nicer. The frequencies in the bleed are much nicer and not so harsh, which means that you can live with that bleed. You don't have to gate as much as you think, and you can really, like, it, it makes more sense if you want to have an open sound and a natural sound to, to have some of that bleed because it gives you the, f the sense of a real drum kit. Um, and also they, they have a really good uh, high-end frequency in, in the attack um, and they take EQing very well. So we're going to see how we end up with mic placement for now I think I'm gonna have something like this like I talked about yesterday miking is always a bit of a you have to find the middle ground like if 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 I didn't have to care about the symbols I would probably place these mics way further away from the drum but now I have to think about here being a crash for instance so if I ha would have this mic further away from the drum, I would have less of the drum and more of the crash. So I have to find a middle ground there that works. Uh, same here for the floor toms. It's the same mic, the VM44. And um, same thing with the placement to try to um, find a good spot where it rejects the cymbals enough, but also um, here's the drum in a good way and the drum head in a good way. And if you point it too much towards the head, you only get the head, you don't get that full resonance sound. But if you point it too far, far away, you only get the attack, but you also get a lot more bleed. Um, and then comes the cymbals, and some of them I've closed mic. For instance, this uh, China cymbal right here, I mic this in this angle because I want to, like when Jonas is hitting it, it's, move, it's moving like this. If I would point the mic here, for instance, the symbol would come closer and further away when he plays, and that would give a weird, like, wave noise. You would hear the symbol going, oh, wow, 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 when it goes like this. Instead, the mic is pointing, um, along this angle because it, it, it's not moving to, uh, towards where the mic is. I could also place it like right down in the middle of the symbol, which would give the same effect. 
but it, it's not, it doesn't give me the sound I want. It would give me too much, uh, too much of, the, of the high frequencies. So, and again, like I said yesterday, don't think so much about how, it's, how it looks the best when you mic something. Because when you mic a drum, the only important thing is how it sounds and not what it looks like. Uh, so if you see, you know, these tasty pictures um, of drum miking, it's maybe that is not, you know, the way that sounds best. Uh, over here we have a stack that Jonas brought. And a stack is two cymbals that are tightly pinched together to give a sort of a trashy sound. And these are a bit hard to mic because you really have to like figure out a way to like we have a crash here you have a china here there's a lot of sound going on if this doesn't work if there's too much bleed i'm gonna have to mic it from the bottom but i would prefer to have it from the uh, from the top because it just gives me a nicer sound but we'll see what happens with it and if it if it makes sense to have it like that uh, same thing with the ride. Sometimes I mic uh, the ride from the bottom, but it gives me a not as good sound, but less bleed. But I think on this song, Jonas is crashing the ride a lot, so we might not even use it. But I always have as a rule to um, mic, not the crashes, but mic the, the other cymbals and nine times out of ten I don't use them or the person that's mixing don't use those mics and then all of a sudden in in one of the songs on the album during the mix you realize that oh wait there's a there's one hit on the ride maybe he does a thing on the ride bell or maybe he does a very tricky thing like a tricky pattern with the stack or something and the overheads don't hear that because you have just played the crashes and then it's really nice to have those closed mic to bring up just then. You can cut out those hits uh, on those mics. So that it always makes sense to have this as kind of a fail safe if you need. Like same thing if I use splashes, like really tiny symbols. I always mic them because all of a sudden you realize you need them. Uh, the last one of the closed mic symbols is the hi-hat. And... Today I chose uh, the Shure SM7 on the hi-hat. And it's got a bit darker character than uh, a regular uh, condenser mic like I have on the Ride Stack and China. And since these hi-hats are so bright that we chose today, the Sabian AAX stage hats with a studio hat bottom, um, they're so bright, so it's, it's not a problem to get that brightness in. But since they're so bright, it's nice to have a mic that's a little darker and a little more low end. And I'm pointing this away from the symbol because out here in the edge of the symbol is more of the dark character of the symbol. If I would point it in, in the middle, I only get that high end treble. And this is also a good placement because it points away from the crash and the snare, so I don't get that much bleed. If I would point it that way, I would get the same type of sound, but I would get too much of the other stuff. Um, up here we have the overheads. And overheads are like the one of the key mics when it comes to uh, a drum sound. And with these stands, I've actually done this, that these are loose uh, because that makes me comf like uh, then I know that if I move the stands, they will always point the way they're doing, which is straight down. There's many ways of doing an overhead miking. Sometimes I use the XY miking, um, which is more face correct, but it doesn't give you as wide a uh, drum sound as I like for this kind of music or this kind of playing. Um, and we're going to measure these so they are the same distance to the snare, which means that the, f the snare will be in phase with these two. 
and that will make these two work really well with the close mics on the snare. And that's one of the keys when it comes to have a sound, um, like a good snare sound. And we will talk more about that in the mix workshop later on. So we will measure these in just a second and maybe point them a better way. Uh, then we have these mics over here, room mics. These are the Neumann uh, U87 classic studio mic. And these are <coughs> in Omni pattern, so they're, they're not really directed in any way. I can have it like this, I can have it like this, it doesn't matter. It basically takes everything around it. So this mic takes this section of the room, and then over there you have the same type of mic in the, at, at the same distance uh, doing the same thing over there. And those two uh, panned left and right will give you the, the wideness of the room. And then up there you have the last mic, which is a ceiling mic. And that's um, a ribbon mic, that's a figure eight mic. So it, it looks on the sides and that means it rejects uh, right now it's pointed, so it rejects the drum head, or sorry, the drum kit. Um, so it's only listening to the sides of the room. Uh, and that's kind of a, an ex experimental mic, I would say. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you just have to figure out once you, once you start listening. And... Um, I would say don't be afraid to try these things if you have time. Uh, like you do the safe miking, the close mics, the overheads, the ambience mics on the sides, and then just throw a mic up and see what happens. Sometimes I'll throw up a regular SM57 and just distort it to see what happens. Maybe I use it in one song. Maybe it doesn't make sense at all. Then I just move it and change it for something else or find a new placement. Uh, so yeah, that's... That's the mics, and they are pretty much where I want them, I would say. I might come in during Jonas's sound check and uh, mess with them. But for now, this is how we will do it. Let me just aim that a little better. There we go. So yeah, let's go in and see if we can get some sounds. Hello, Jonas. We are back. Welcome back. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Let's see what people are saying, if they have any good questions. Mm -mm -mm. Can we have a little more volume on the voice mic? Of course you can. Let me sort that for you. Or you want to raise it there? Sure. Yeah, let's just kick that up a notch. Hello. Yeah. I would say. Ah, just take it up on the interface, I guess. Yeah. Let, let, let us know if this is better. Uh, <laughs> what are some cheaper options for mics if you can't afford Neumann? I mean, at the end of the day, a mic is a mic. Like a condenser mic is a condenser mic. It's sure there are difference uh, differences, but they're not that big um, and a more expensive mic is usually they don't have some of the harsh frequencies and you don't have to work with them as much to get a nice sound but if you get a, an affordable uh, condenser mic it's it, you know you're gonna be just fine what, what's that company that makes knockoffs on like warm audio warm and, audio yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there are several of these companies, but Warm Audio is one of them. Uh, they have a U87 um, 
mic, and I don't know what it costs, but it's not that expensive. I mean, also. compared to the real one, it's super cheap. I think the real one is around the ones we have here is around three thousand euros. I half, think you maybe. can get one of those warm audio mics for around like six hundred euros, something like that. Warm audio U eighty seven. I really want to check this out. Yeah, it's around. 600 euros that's not bad and it's it's a pretty good mic mm. it's not you know it's it's a good condenser mic basically yeah. um so you know look around Rode or Rode or however you say it, like everyone says it differently uh, r-o-d-e um they have some great mics that are you know very affordable and still great condenser mics. So look around. We have another question from Fiona saying, uh, having a room mic close to the drums and the storage, will there be any resonance bleed from those at all? <sighs> oh, you mean from the snare drums up there? Yeah, uh, there won't be because I have dampened the snare drums. Um, so there's no rattling or anything. If, if there wasn't, it would be a bigger problem, for sure. Um, what is the usual time management? Like Jonas comes in, you set the drums up. How much time do you give yourself for tuning and mic placements? Well, this is a condensed version we're doing today, a very compressed time version. Like, usually when we record, I would say we spend a day like setting yeah. up the drums, tuning, miking, trying sounds. Yeah, yeah. We, when we've done, we, when we've worked, worked together, it's been uh, like a day. But I have so many drums and stuff, so it takes a lot of time to to get the mics right. And yeah. you know, I'd say if we had like a regular kit, like it this? wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't take it. Like I mean, th this setup was like super quick, like thirty minutes or something like yeah. that. It's yeah. So from now on, I'm gonna use this kit <laughs> and to save save time and money. Right. No, but yeah, I, yeah. We, I would we, say a day. A day. Yeah. If you really want it, like if you want a decent sound. I mean, we we do this so often, but I I, I think a decent sound we could we could get away with that in an hour or two. Mm. But like a, if if you want to look into details and really like find those frequencies and find the things that oh that thing maybe doesn't work maybe we do that better we move that a little you get so picky yeah um so i i usually tell people like a day uh, just so we can prepare and it's also preparations with the songs and the monitoring and all mm. that stuff yeah so around a day uh do you maybe play and record a take and then replace some stuff or do you know by experience how it will sound? I don't understand that question. Vibke, try to... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand what you mean. But I'll, I'm here all day. Like sample replace? Yeah, or? I don't know. Uh, okay, so I think it's time to do some sound check. Yeah, cool. Uh, and I'm going to turn off your uh, mic mm -hmm. so I don't hear the drums through the mic. So you you're sounds just, like a good idea. Yeah, you're just gonna have to uh, do what I tell you to do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll hear you through the overheads, I guess, if I need to. Uh, Peppermine came in with a really good question. I think uh, can you fix suboptimal frequency response of cheaper mics by EQing? Can you fix the suboptimal frequency response of cheaper mics by EQing? E yes and no. Uh, you can fix many things with EQing. And, and there's other things you can do but EQ. I would say in a way, yes, like up to a point. Uh, but but the, the, the sound you capture is only, like you can only do so much. And, and the sound of the mic is, of course, you know, that sound. But I, I've done some tests, like putting up a, a MyLab VM44 and then put a sure beta 57 or sm57 next to it and they sound pretty alike it's not a huge difference but there is a difference um i would say mic placement is more important than expensive mics 
I mean, there's countless albums made with SM57s on snare, toms, and, you know, not super expensive mics on the overhead, stuff like that. So I would say mic placement is a huge part of it. Uh, I say we get going. Cool. Yeah. So what I'm gonna start with is just checking that everything, all the mics are giving me, <laughs> giving me some sound, and then uh, we're gonna look more at each mic and go through them. And I should put some sort of limiter on this drum bus. Uh, maybe just for the people that are watching you, uh, maybe explain to them what they're seeing with the Law of Jacob, Law of Jonas, just so oh, they're not confused yeah. by other plugins in your mixer. Right, sorry about that. Uh, well, here's my, here's my mixer right here, my mix window in Logic. This is the track window, the recording window, and this is the mixer. And the things you see over here, the Love Jacob and Love Jonas, that those are just our talk mics, what you hear us talking through. And I run them through Logic because they have um, this plugin on called, uh, they're called Mutomatic, it looks like this. Uh, so every time I hit space or record, our mics our talkback mics or our interview mics are um, uh, muted. And that means that when, when I press play, you will only hear what's coming through the desk to you and not the sound through the speakers into my mic or in Jonas's case, the drums into his mic. So that's why I run them through, this, uh, through my own recording company instead of running them straight to KJ. And then over here we have the drums and then over here we have Jonas's song on the backtracks. And uh, as you can see here, the drums are the ones I showed you. Kick in, kick out, kick sub, snare top, snare bottom, tom one, two, three, four, china, ride, hi-hat, two overheads, two ambience mics, one ceiling mic. And then the stack ended up over here because I realized too late that he was bringing a stack. Um, yeah, that's it. I should actually move that stack over here. There we go. And I'm looking like I'm going to pan this from my end, not drummer's perspective, but my perspective. Um, oh man, you're asking so many questions. That's so awesome. I meant like when you place the mics, do you try that out, like trial and error, and does your confidence in your mic choices come with experience, like did you choose those placement on the spot? Yes, I did. And that's a great question, because I've tried, I've spent so much time placing mics, I've spent so much time learning mic placement. So nowadays, um, you know, I could uh, mic a drum kit without hearing it, I know what it's going to sound like up to a point, and that placement is pretty much based on um, experience. But I also try to, uh, you know, try new things and try new ways of doing it and also adjusting uh, the way I do things for the sound and the drummer because um, I don't want to uh, get stuck in one way of doing it. I really want the sound to be the drummer's sound. Um, What about face displacements when you set up the mics? Do you care for issues? Yes, and I'm going to talk more about that in the mix workshop because what I'm doing today, I'm not going to use any outboards or any EQ or um, dynamics on the SSL console because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing with the frequencies. Usually I do things like way more on the console than I will today. But today I feel like it's, it's better for this workshop that I do all of it in the computer so you can see what I'm doing and you can, you know, realize what it is I'm doing with um, the frequencies and stuff like that. 
Uh, and phase is a big part of that. So we're going to look at that on the mixing workshop. Is Jonas listening to the songs and the input of the drums or just the song? Jonas will be listening to the drums also. So he has a headphone mixer in there. You can hear me, right? You can hear me. You cannot? You can? No? No? Yes. <laughs> he has a headphone mixer in there with separate channels. So uh, he can... Um, he can choose how much of his own drums he wants and the click track and the backing tracks and me talking to him. So he's all, he's all in control of his own mixing in there. But right now when we set the sounds I think he's going to have the drums really low. So if I boost something he's not, you know, it won't hurt his ears. And then, you know, when I tell him to he will raise it up so he gets a good feel for the drums in there. Alright, so Jonas. Uh, you know Back in Black with ACDC? I think we just go for Back in Black right now so I can hear kick, snare and hi-hat. That sounds like a broken cable. That sounded really bad. So I'm gonna go and switch that. Oh, am I am I that loud in the in, way in on my mic? Huh? Open logic. See when I'm talking, it's really loud. Yes, but it sounds okay in it. Okay. I'm checking. Cool. Well, as you could hear, the bass drum sounded like. Well, like it was broken, and that's one of two things. Either the mic is broken, which I don't think, or the mic cable is broken. And right now I'm not going to take any chances, so I'm going to sw swap both out. Because that will be the fastest way. And if it still remains after that, then the preamp is broken, and that would be, that would be bad in so many ways. Anywho, let's see if we can do this quickly. Also, I would say that these things just happen. Like, on a normal recording, an album, there's always like at least one thing yeah. going wrong, uh, if not more. That's just how it is. It's a part of the job. Part of life. Have you ever had like a super critical thing that just uh, went wrong? If I've had a super critical well, thing went like wrong, something went really really bad. Like uh, I don't know, you uh, one really important mic died, or uh, you know something like that. I've actually like, had my whole uh, studio die right after I told the drummer, okay, let's hear the kick drum, and then the whole studio died. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty... That's it's pretty happened bad. one time, and it was pretty scary. But ap that was eight years ago. After yeah. that, it's been rolling like a train. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right, back to back in black then. That's more like it. Okay.
All right, Jonas, I'm gonna come in and uh, do something about that snare. So that snare is... Uh, what am I hearing? Oh, who was the headphones? Now that snare rings forever. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, but it's ringy. Crazy ringy. Oh yeah. Would you say that, because we talked a little bit about yesterday, how it works live when you're like in a situation and you're, uh, you know, you have to uh, really do some quick dampening or the sound engineer is like, you know, dampen the drums mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's really, you don't have a lot of time. Um, you know, it's sound check, it's a festival. You have to do something about it now. Yeah. What do you do about that uh, in I, your position? I always carry uh, these pieces of gel called moon gel. Yeah, we with, talked about them yes, yesterday. Yep. Uh, so I have like a bunch of them, like four or five pieces, always in my um, in my drum bag. Yeah. Um, so I more or less, if I feel when I set up the drums at a festival or something, uh, I always have them ready to just put put them on. Yeah. And uh, it saves me a lot of headache and a lot of time for tuning bad drums actually so uh, in those situations I, I go f more for uh, like the drums to, to feel good yeah. and then I solve the rest with the moon gel rather than spend all the time on tuning the drums because it's yeah unless you're, you're um, like feeling it straight away you're not gonna make it on, on time so would you say that tuning drums live, how important is that? Like compared, of course it's more important than the studio, but is it li live to you? Is it more about making it just sound okay and go from there? Or? Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm used to that, like our sound engineers, they, uh, they, they put a lot of gates on the drums in general. Yeah. So. If I can have like a, um, yeah, I, I go for feel and like making them sound okay, maybe a bit more dead and dense than in the studio envir yeah. environment. Uh, because then I know it, it will save them time and it will save me time too. Yeah. And if you so. play on an outdoor festival, it doesn't really matter how the drums sound because it's going to be dead anyway because there's no walls. Yeah. So they have oh, to yeah, use yeah. reverb. That's the only way, th way they can like fake a room mm. outside anyway. Yeah, that's true. And I'm um, I'm not like t super picky when it comes to tuning drums live anyways. Yeah. Like So you asked me if I've had any real like oh shit situations in the mm. studio. What's your biggest oh shit situation live? I don't know, like breaking a uh, bass drum, uh, like beaters or... Wow, yeah. have you done that? Yeah, and I actually like broke my uh, my right, since I, I play like uh, with leading with my right foot, I broke that pedal once uh, during a gig. So I had to like play the rest of the show with one pedal and with my left foot. Oh, and that's I terrible. With my left foot. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go back to uh, Back in Black. That's my favorite song.
Tom fill, same thing, but do some tom fills on all four toms.
Cool. So that was the basic gain settings of the sounds. Uh, we're gonna take a break now and we're gonna go to the Vimeo link, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, you will follow the rest of the stream on that link. So we're gonna take a short break and we'll see you in the Vimeo link and you can ask the rest of your questions there and then we will move on with this drum recording. Take it easy.